hello 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 how is everybody doing i hope you're having a good day we'll start this english lesson about sound in about 36 minutes minutes no seconds seconds we'll start in 30 30 seconds yeah where it's um well hopefully my brain works properly for this lesson we'll see how that goes but yes uh welcome to this english lesson about sound we'll start in about 17 seconds once i have once i have tested everything out it sounds sounds like everything is working properly so that's good um and uh, that's kind of important for a lesson about sound well hello and welcome to this english lesson about sound today we'll talk about one of the senses we have a number of senses i think five uh taste touch uh sight sound or hearing we would say um but we're going to talk about the world of sound um i'm going to talk about everything that i could think of yesterday when i designed these slides for this english lesson uh related to the topic of sound i think it will be a fun lesson there are some pretty cool words and phrases in this lesson so once again welcome to this english lesson about sound uh before we get started a couple of things one thank you for being here an hour earlier if you're wondering why i changed the regular time it's because i teach the first class of the day this semester last semester at my job i'm a high school teacher i taught later in the day and so i didn't need to go in right away but now my first class starts right at 10 to 9 so i have to do this lesson a bit earlier. It's why I have some I think I have bags under my eyes maybe a little bit because I had to get up a little earlier this morning. An hour earlier actually in order to do this lesson but I am not complaining. I enjoy doing these lessons and I enjoy getting up and doing them for you. Uh first of all, uh make sure you have good English conversations in the chat. Some of you might notice that Dave is not here today again. Dave and I have both shifted schedules. So, Dave will be back but this week does not work for Dave. Dave has uh is a student and there is a semester system where he is as well. Um but please use the chat to have fun English conversations. If you are a member or a regular, please kindly um assist people so they know how to have fun English conversations in the chat uh and kind of alert me in some way if something in the chat needs to be taken care of and I will do that but yes, we're gonna have this English conversation uh English conversation, this English lesson. I do want to give a shout out and thank you to Eugene. So, Eugene uh sent me this beautiful what we would call a um a lap blanket or a warming blanket um from I can't really show you the whole thing but it is a beautiful blanket. So, thank you, Eugene. That came last week. I was quite surprised. Thank you for that and the other gifts that you sent me as well. I was uh I was quite happy and excited to open the large box. So, thank you for that. Uh anyways, should we get this lesson started? If you have a question during the lesson about sound, you can ask it using the link in the description below and Nightbot will share the link as well. And I believe there is a way to get it to show up by typing exclamation mark link and mode eggs will help out with that as well. But let's get this lesson started. Sound. When we talk about sound, we're talking about waves that come into our ear and our ear turns it into information our brains can understand and then we hear something. So, as you go through life, you can see things with your eyes but you can also hear sounds with your ear. You probably hear sounds from the very minute you get up. The first sound I hear in the morning is my alarm clock going off but this morning, I didn't actually have to use it. I woke up before my alarm clock. So, the sound of my alarm clock wasn't required this morning. I woke up all on my own. So, that sound is what you hear with your ears. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. This is how you hear sound. Um you can sometimes 
feel sound in your chest if it's a very, very low sound. But 99.9% of the time, you hear sound with your ear. That is how you sense whether there is noise or sound around you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between the verb hear and listen. This can be confusing for some people. The best way I find to describe this is this. When you hear something, you are not choosing to do that. It happens to you. If Jen drops a plate in the kitchen, I will hear that. When I walk outside, if a dog barks, I hear it. The sound is coming to me. I am not choosing to hear that sound. It is happening to me. So, when you hear something, you're describing a sound that is happening to you. When you listen, it changes a little bit. When you listen, you are deciding to hear those sounds. I know I used the verb hear in there but I have to do that. When you listen to music, you have decided to listen to music. When you listen to someone talking, you have decided I'm going to listen to them. So, the basic difference is when you hear something, it's happening to you. You hear a dog bark. You hear someone drop a plate. You didn't decide for that to happen. Something has just happened and you hear it. But when you listen to a podcast or when you listen to my voice right now or when you listen um let me see what else would you when you listen to music, you have decided that that is something that you want to do. So, hopefully, that helps you a little bit. When you hear something, you have no choice. When you listen to something, you have chosen to do that. Sound is made up of waves that move through the air. Now, remember this is not an a science lesson. I'm not going to go into all the details but there is something that makes the sound and it actually creates waves in the air that we can't see. They are invisible and our ear then starts to move at that same speed, our eardrum. So, again, not a science lesson but sound waves are how sound travels. When I yell, my my voice travels. I have created sound waves that travel through the air and eventually they um they hit someone's ear and they can hear me. The main way we make sound with technology is to use a speaker. You might have computer speakers on each side of your computer at home or maybe right now. If you're listening with Uh, earbuds. Oops. Earbuds. There's actually a tiny speaker inside. When you uh, talk on your phone, maybe the sound right now for you while you're listening to me is coming out of one of the speakers that is on your phone. So, the speaker is just a little machine um, or a little piece of technology that will create sound waves based on the information it is getting. And then, of course, this in front of me is a microphone. So, as I talk into this, the sound of my voice moves something inside. It's converted into electricity and it gets sent all over the world and then at your end, your earbuds or your speakers recreate the sound of my voice. So, the microphone is what for lack of a better way takes sound in and the speaker puts sound out. Microphones and speakers are awesome. They are what allow me to teach English like this on the internet. Super fun. And then, of course, I mentioned earbuds but there's also headphones. These are things that you put on your ear or in your ear. Headphones go on your ear or over your ear and they allow you to listen privately. Uh, When you wear, wear headphones or earbuds which go in your ear, Other people can't hear what you're listening to. So, one of the ways to hear sounds, uh, one of the ways to listen to someone or to listen to music is to use a pair of headphones or a pair of earbuds. We don't always add the word pair. You know, in English, we like to shorten things, right? So, we use headphones or earbuds. And there's a general term called audio. 
we use the word audio to refer to many things in the world of sound. You can buy audio equipment. You can be an audio technician. Um you can listen to audio books. So, it's another I guess more formal way to talk about sound. Um you have things like um audio books were uh, one of the coolest things that I discovered when I was starting to perfect my French. Audiobooks are really cool because you can listen to someone read the book to you. So, audio is kind of a a more formal general term for the f- things in the world of sound. Um you can work at an audio visual department if you are at a university. I did that when I was in university. I worked at the audio visual department. So, I worked with equipment that was used for audio as well as for video. So, sound because it travels in waves has a speed and the speed of sound at my understanding is 343 meters per second but I think that's at 20 degrees Celsius and maybe that's at sea level. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, this is not an English lesson but sound travels at a certain speed. Um and so, when you say something, it actually takes a split second for it to get to someone's ear. You can hear this if you are somewhere where you're yelling at someone far away um or if you see something happen far away that's loud, you won't hear the sound immediately because the speed of sound um requires a certain amount of time for that sound to arrive at your ears but Speed of sound, um I'm not sure what it is in kilometers. I think it's over 1200 kilometers uh, per second or something like that. Don't quote me on it. Um oh yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? No. 1200 kilometers an hour. (laughs) See, again, not a science lesson at all. Hey, let's look at some questions as we move along. By the way, one other difference with the Friday lessons for the next little bit is that they will be slightly shorter. I'm gonna try to do the lesson in about 50 minutes instead of an hour. Um that's just temporary for the next few uh months while I teach a bit more but let's get to some questions. (coughs) Sorry, you had to hear the sound of me coughing. I should have muted my mic. Ruslan says, hi dear teacher Bob. How are you sir? I'm good. What is the most popular car sound system brand in Canada? Which one would you like to have in your brand new car? When I was young, Pioneer was one of the popular brands and I think Denon, I can't remember but currently, I don't actually know. I haven't looked at um high-end car audio equipment lately. Um that would be curious to know what is uh, the most expensive or most popular. Right now, most people I know just use the radio or stereo that comes with the car. Priscilla is back. Hi, Priscilla. Hey, isn't a question. It's just a comment. I started to learn English because of the sound of Avril Lavigne's voice. So beautiful. Thank you, Bob, Ontario and Canada. Yes, Avril Lavigne has a very cool voice. Um very, I like, I like Avril Lavigne. Yes, for sure. Um Skater Boy. There's a song that you could listen to. Uh let me see. Ario. Hi, Ario. Hola, Mr. Bob. How are you? My question is, could you sing love songs? My mom is sing love songs on the weekend sometimes to entertain me. I'm not going to sing a love song this morning but that certainly would be something that is nice to hear um or nice to listen to. Hey, I wanted to give a shout out to Brent from Speak English with this guy. I see him in the chat. Brent, I'm an hour earlier because I've drawn the the short stick and I have to teach period one this semester. If you don't know what drawing the short stick means, sometimes it means when you've uh been given something that's not ideal but uh, short straw or short stick. So, I gotta go to work in 40 minutes or so. We got lots of time. Um Fabio from Italy says, what does talk my ear off mean? Thanks a lot. This is when someone talks to you a lot. We have an English word incessantly which means to do something without stopping. When someone talks to you incessantly or when someone talks to you nonstop, uh we would say they they just talk my ear off. 
when my kids were little, sometimes when I would drive in the van, they would be in the back and they would talk my ear off. So, I would be trying to think or to drive and my kids would talk my ear off. It simply means that they talked a lot. Yaroslav, morning the wisest teacher Bob. It's been a while. Hi, Yaroslav. Hope you're okay. Do you like nature's sounds? Take care. I do. Um I love the sound of nature. I love walking and hearing geese. I like hearing the um grass or reeds rustle in the wind. Rustle is a cool English word, isn't it? They rustle. Um by the way, Mode Eggs has been begging me to make a lesson um with sound effects and I will do that at some point but uh, yes, leaves uh crunching under my feet. By the way, in my last video, I was outside while it was snowing and you could hear the sound of snow crunching under my feet. Uh if Dave was here, I'd ask him to find a link to that but uh it was a good a uh, little a good um a good thing to hear. I love that sound. Mode the sandwich says, hi, Mr. Bob. To you, is there any difference between a thump and a thud? Thank you and sorry for waking you up on an early, an hour early. You are awesome. Uh yelled into a megaphone. So, yeah, a megaphone is something. I think I might have a picture of one coming up. We'll see. Um a thump and a thud would be the same thing. If one of my kids fell out of bed, I would hear a thud or I would hear a thump. Um thump could mean more like if you're you could you thump someone on the back. Like if someone does a good job, you might thump them on the back. You'll see that at a sports game where a player will thump the other player on the back if they get a goal. So, when used as a verb, they are different. You don't thud someone but when you hear a thump or a thud, it is to my thing this to my ear the same thing. Uh let's see here. Winter Wright. Hi, Bob. If someone has difficulties in hearing but he is not 100% completely deaf, have a nice day. We would just say that they are having, they are experiencing hearing loss um and then we would just say that they are hard of hearing. Those are the two phrases that are acceptable to use from my understanding. I'm not an expert but uh you have to be careful uh when people have, are experiencing challenges with hearing or sight. You have to make sure you use the correct description so that you are polite. Andre Padron. Hello, Mr. Bob. Does the sound of people honking for nothing important bother you? <laughs> it drives me nuts. Yes. I don't like it when if I'm at a stoplight and the light turns green and if I'm a little slow to start going, if the person behind me honks, that does bother me. Yes, for sure. It's like, just relax. We're going to go. Uh B Sultan says, hello, teacher Bob. How are you doing? Could you please explain the difference between the words yelling and screaming? So, first of all, yelling and screaming can mean the same thing if you're using words. So, if I was yelling at my children, get out of bed. It's time to get out of bed. You could say that I was, by the way, I would it would be a lot louder if I was doing that. Um let me just check something here. Something just flickered on my screen. So, if you're using words, you could use yelling and screaming to describe that, okay? You know, my dad was yelling at me to get out of bed this morning. My mom was screaming at me to get out of bed but screaming itself can also mean just to go like ah. That would be considered screaming. I'm not using words and you wouldn't use yelling in that situation. Uh let's see here. Freddie says, hi, Bob. How are you? Sous la mer. Under the ocean level, we call it the world of silence. Despite there's lots of there, there's a lot of noises. The sound underwater goes way further than in the air. Yeah, interesting because like whales make low pitched sounds, right? And they travel through the water. Um and I always found it interesting as a child when you swim underwater with another person, you can pretend or you can try and talk to each other and that's a lot of fun. Okay, let's see here. Sophia says, hello, dear teacher Bob. Do you remember your first favorite sound from your childhood? For me, it's the sound of my mom's voice. Um I can't remember my first favorite sound but one of my favorite sounds was if I was petting one of my cats and if they started to purr, you know, the when cats purr. That's still, that's a very 
pleasant sound. I really enjoy that sound. Let's see here. Mode says audio and video are good on my end. Thanks, Mode, for the heads up. Um Eugene keeps saying saxophone. I wonder if do you play the saxophone or you like the saxophone, Eugene? Uh anyways, let me just scroll through the chat. Nothing out of the ordinary. Excellent. Let me get back to the lesson. Here we go. So, let me do one thing. There we go. There's something called the sound barrier. So, when an airplane goes faster than the speed of sound, they need to get through the sound barrier. The faster a vehicle, usually an airplane because they're the only things that really go that fast. When a vehicle or when an airplane gets close to the speed of sound, the sound waves start to compress in front of it and it's kind of like a barrier and once they get through it, I think it's um there's less turbulence. I don't know all check something here because my internet says it's not working. Let's just pause and see if it comes back. I think it will and maybe I'll re-explain sound barrier for a second. Um all good now, I think. Yeah, I'll just wait for two seconds while we wait and then we'll get back. We'll do sound barrier again. Here we go. Sound barrier. <laughs> it feels weird because I've I've already explained this but you guys weren't here. So, let's let me just do it again. The sound barrier is kind of an invisible barrier that exists when a vehicle tries to go faster than the speed of sound. So, as they approach the speed of sound, it gets more difficult for the airplane to fly but eventually, it can break the sound barrier. Um for a long time, airplanes couldn't go faster than the speed of sound but eventually, they were able to design airplanes that could go faster than the speed of sound and so, they broke the sound barrier. Sound check. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Or check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, three. A sound check is something that people do before they start using a microphone. So, when I am about to start my English lesson, I sometimes tap my mic and then on my screen, I can see that the mic is working. So, it's a very subtle sound check. I don't do this. I don't go testing, testing one, two, three, testing. But that is something you might hear if you go to a show early, you might see a sound technician or an audio technician do a sound check and they'll go uh, check, testing, testing one, two, three and they might tap the mic a little bit. Does that hurt your ears? Sorry if you have ear uh earbuds on and that makes uh too loud of a sound but that is called a sound check. Let's describe sounds for a little bit. When uh there is a sound that almost hurts your ears, you would say it is loud. When an airplane takes off, it is loud. When you go to a rock concert, it is loud. When the volume is really, really high on your television, we say that the TV is too loud. Uh when people yell, it is loud. So, when you are loud, you are making noises where the volume uh is just really, really high. And then, of course, the opposite is, is quiet. But when you're quiet, you, um, these girls are whispering to each other. So, when you are quiet, the volume is very, very low. You're talking quietly. You're talking softly. There's a few ways to describe it in English. But certainly, if you imagine, um, when a cat walks by, it's very quiet. If you listen closely, you can hear its feet. But because its feet are padded, it's very quiet when a cat walks by. Um when our dog Walter runs by, it's not quiet. It's very loud. He's a big loud dog. So, quiet and loud are opposites of each other. And that's because of what's called pitch. And I'm not going to get into all the details but because sound travels in waves, there's a different frequency There's a different size of the wave. When the wave is longer and has more amplitude, again, not a science lesson, you have a lower pitched sound. So, when I talk like this, 
the waves coming out of my mouth are much longer. And when I talk like this, the sound waves coming out of my mouth are much uh, more like the one that says higher pitch. <laughs> so that is what pitch is. It's a change in the um on, in how the sound wave looks and then our ears interpret that in a different way. Uh let's see here. So, dogs can hear high pitched sounds. There's actually sounds that are so high pitched that humans can't hear it um but dogs can. So, sometimes your dog will be looking around because possibly they hear a sound that is outside of the range of human hearing. By the way, humans can hear from I think twenty to twenty thousand hertz or something like that. Twenty hertz to twenty thousand hertz. Uh, I might be getting the actual description wrong. Someone who's more scientific uh can contribute that information. So, we have when we talk about high pitched and low pitched sounds, we also sometimes refer to them as bass and treble. So, bass again is something referring to the low sounds. Often when you listen to music, you might turn up the bass. Sometimes you'll hear a car go by that has really large speakers in it. So, it can create really good bass sounds when it plays music and that person might turn up the bass um in order for you to hear it. So, when you hear a car go by and it's like when the car goes by, you can really hear the bass in the song. Um they've probably turned up the knob that says bass. And then treble, if you hear a song and you really hear the cymbals or like if you hear all those really high sounds, it's possible that they have turned up the treble. So, on a piece of audio equipment, on a radio, you might have a knob to turn up or turn down the bass or turn up or turn down the treble. And then, sound is measured using something called the decibel scale. We usually say that sound is a certain amount of decibels. If you look here, you'll see that you know a heavy metal concert has very high there's a lot of decibels in the sound. The sound is very very loud and it's actually um can be damaging to your ears. When I worked in construction, there were certain tools we would use. When I worked in construction, there were certain tools we would use that where we would uh wear hearing protection because they put out too many decibels. They were too loud for the human ear. This uh live stream, this English lesson is probably more at around conversation level. If you look in the orange in the middle on the scale, it's uh at conversation level. So, decibel is the unit of measure uh for measuring how loud sound is. And we also have what's called a sound effect. Sometimes I do sound effects. Sound effects uh when you do a sound effect, you are recreating the sound of something else. A long time ago when they were making movies and if they needed to create the sound of horses, um let me see if I can do it here. I don't have coconuts. Uh they would you pretend these are coconuts and then they would go like that does not sound like a horse but they would use coconuts or two coconut halves to kind of recreate the sound of a horse. When I was making the sound of a cat purring, I'm making a sound effect. It's not the original sound. It's just an attempt to make the same sound again. So, sound effects are one of the ways they recreate sounds for movies or for podcasts or for English lessons like this. Mute. So, there is a mute button on my mic. I'm not going to push it but a mute button is a button you push to stop all sound. When I'm watching TV, my remote control for my TV has a mute button. If the phone rings, I'll hit the mute button um and then immediately the television will stop making sound. When you are watching a YouTube video, if you click on the little speaker at the bottom, you will mute the video. The video will keep playing but it will stop making sound. 
So, the mute button is what you use to do that to stop something from making sound or when you talk about a microphone to stop it from hearing you or listening to you. Um sometimes when you are in a Zoom meeting, it's polite if there are lots of people in an online meeting to mute your microphone so people don't hear what's happening around you or in your house. Hey, let's go into members only chat mode. Let me turn that on for a second here. Um let's see here. Where do I have to click? Right there. Members save. And let's talk a little bit about what members are. Members are people who have decided to support me or thank me. Uh whatever your reason, they have decided to click the join button which is located below or somewhere. J-O-I-N. Some people have been members for a very long time. Thank you. Some people join for a month or two and they'll send me a message saying, I've joined to be a member for a month or two. Please buy a coffee or buy Oscar a treat. Um it's just a little thank you. It's not required but if you do, you get an extra video on Wednesdays. Uh you get your name in green if you look at the chat during a live lesson. Um and you uh what else do you get? Oh, you get a crown beside your name. So, very cool. Anyways, if you're interested, check below. Right now, I am going to continue answering questions from the forum and then I will also answer questions directly from the chat wherever that is on your screen. We'll get back to the lesson in about 10 minutes by the way. Alex Lee says, hi, mister Bob. What do you think about hip hop? I like all kinds of music. I have listened to almost every kind of music in the world and I do like hip hop. Lots of fun. Lots of good beats. Lots of good bass in some of those hip hop songs. Very good. Uh Mode in the chat says, give a thumbs up to the best juggler in the circus of life. I did juggle in a video last week. I went out and I talked about the word struggle and juggle in a short. It was fun. Uh Yaroslav says, I was absent on previous lesson. Hope you had fun. We did and we missed you. It's good to have you back. Let's see. Let me get the next question on the screen. Uh Allie, hi teacher Bob. Do you remember what was the hilarious sound you have ever heard or what was the most hilarious sound you have ever heard? Well, this is kind of a funny topic. I'll talk about children. For some reason, children often think that burps and farts are very funny sounds. A burp is when you eat something or you have air in your stomach and you it comes out. Uh a fart is the same thing but it happens at the other end. Um and farts usually smell. But uh I think I instead of me answering this, I'll just say this. Kids sometimes think burps and farts are hilarious. I am not making a sound effect for either of those things, okay? Um not at all. Harry 300. Hi, Harry 100 plus 100 plus 100. Why do people call it a megaphone? Do you also have a kilophone or even a gigaphone? Nope. It's just a megaphone. Um a megaphone is like it's a a microphone and a speaker together and you can use it to make announcements at outdoor activities. Okay, let me see here. From the chat, Lolly, noise is a sound but a sound is not necessarily a noise. Correct. Yes. Noise has a bit of a negative connotation usually. Um when you hear a noise, it's an unexpected sound or it's an annoying sound. You know, the kids are making a lot of noise or stop making so much noise in the kitchen. So, usually, I will use the word noise when I don't like the sound, okay? So, again, if Jen started making breakfast, our kitchen's right there and if she was very loud, I would after the live stream, I would say, oh, you were making a lot of noise during my live stream. So, it has a negative sense to it. Uh let's see. The bass can help some deaf people to feel the music or sound around them and can make them able to dance to the, on the, to the music. To the music, Freddie. Yes, cuz you can hear bass. You can feel it in your chest a little bit. Ralph, silence. Nothing but silence in the chat. Members, let's go make some noise. Yeah, that's actually using noise in a positive way. At a sports game, someone might say, let's make some noise and then everyone starts cheering. Um let me see here. Uh Key Park, what's the difference between yell and shout please? Is shout an old school word? No, those are identical. You know, I can yell at my students. I can shout at my students. Um 
I would I would probably use yell that neither both are used quite a bit still. Yes. Um Harry says Bob said it again LOL. I'm not sure what I said but hey welcome CS team. Hey CS team has joined as a member. Thanks CS team. Uh Freddy Wolf what would you call the sound that's made by Tarzan in his jungle? Um like ah, 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 ah. I can't make that sound. Um it would just be a yell. That would be his yell. Lolly says thanks Bob. Got it. Yaroslav I almost forgot. Why would you remind Harry three and it's still hilarious. Hope everything will find its end. Oh there's like a mystery in the chat that I have to explore later. Key Park says thank you. Lolly says my favorite sound in life is the purr of my cat. Yes. Cats purring is a cool sound. Uh, let's get a question back up on the screen. CS team. Hello Bob. I wish you're doing well. I wish we would say this. I hope you're doing well. That'd be a good. Um you're a good teacher and I like your voice. I have heard that from a number of people that they enjoy the sound of my voice. So, I'm happy that in life I have a voice that people like. Um hopefully people like it. Hopefully, it doesn't grate on you. Some people's voices aren't pleasant and we use the word great. It grates on you. It means it bothers your ear. Uh oh, I see. He said it when he exp- oh, yes, when I talk about the other end. Now, I get it. I get the joke. Uh Eugene says, we went to Omni TV station to do recording for Lunar New Year celebration. Oh, that's cool. You went to a TV station. They probably have really good audio equipment there, I would imagine. Uh BM says, do you like the sound of farting? No, I don't. I do not. I do not like that. Um let's see here. From the chat, let's go back to the chat for a bit. Um Noriko says, so do I. The sound is always soothing. The sound of a cat purring um is a very soothing sound. We would say it soothes your soul. It makes you feel peaceful. Uh Yaroslav says to Harry, people should have some things to laugh at. Yes. Mo, by the way, Mr. Ba, when I suggest a video, I don't do it as a request because I know you're too busy and I don't want you to feel any pressure. I only do it because I know having new ideas makes you happy. Yes, it makes me happy but I do really like it and what I'll say is this. I went through a semester where I was somewhat busy. There's the word somewhat for those of you that learned it with me this week. I was a little bit busy um but this so I made videos. You'll notice a lot of my videos from last fall are me standing outside in 10 different spots teaching 10 different things. My hope for this coming semester is that because I'll have a bit more time, I'll be able to make videos that will um require me to plan, think and uh, do a bit more work. So, I hope that makes um uh, English lessons that are more fun. Uh, let me check the audio here. I just got an error again. So, anyways, mode, I love it when you give ideas. That is great. Lolly, Noriko, we are on the same page. Ralph. Yes, not joking. Bob's voice was one of the main reasons I stayed at his channel. Can turn into a sound machine but normally it's very peaceful and nice to hear. And thanks, Ralph, by the way. Thanks for the compliment. Naomi says, I like the movie The Sound of Music. Very cool music. I love the intro when she's singing up uh in the mountains in this beautiful green alpine pasture. Very cool. Uh Lolly saying hi to, hi to Naomi. Hi, Naomi from me as well. Mode. Also, I loved your drums drum roll on the fly in your short video today. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to do a a drum roll outside in the freezing cold and there happened to be a wagon beside me. I could do it on. Um Eugene, we will go to CTV for a live stream the family feud this month. Oh, that's very cool. Are you on family feud? If you are, let me know. I will definitely watch that. That would be super cool and fun. Uh let's see here. Form questions are done. Um Yaroslav says creating sounds is one more of Bob's superpowers. No, it's just me being silly I think. Hey, I'm gonna cut members only chat off a little short, a minute short. I want to make sure that this lesson and me getting to work times out well today. I'll just say thank you once again to everyone out there who is a subscriber. You guys are awesome. Uh you help me If you watch my short lesson from today on my other channel, uh you'll see the um special microphone I bought um for windy days. 
I'm not going to show you now. I'm going to just let you go watch that video. But those are the kinds of things I'm able to purchase in order to make this channel better. So, thank you for being members. Thank you for helping me uh, do this uh, channel. It's great. Uh, just noticed something a uh, setting on my camera is wrong. Oh, well. Not a big deal. Sound panel. A sound panel, it can actually refer to two things. But normally, a sound panel refers to um foam panels we put on the wall to dampen the sound and to reduce echo. Echo, by the way, is when you're like, hey, 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 hey. Like, if you're in a big room and you yell and your voice comes back to you, that's an echo. So, like, hey, hey. So, if I was in a cave, you might hear an echo. Sound panels are used to stop sound from reflecting. It absorbs the sound or deadens the sound. Um but a sound panel can also be the board with all the knobs that they use at a recording studio. We might call that a sound panel as well. Um volume. So, this knob goes to 11. This is a secret joke. If you've seen a certain movie, you'll understand the reference. But volume refers to normally how loud sound is. Specifically, when you're using equipment, when you're using a radio or a TV or when you're listening to music with your uh your phone and your air airpods, um we would have volume. You can turn the volume up you can turn the volume down. So, when I'm watching TV, sometimes I turn it up. If I can't hear it, if it's too quiet, I'll turn it up and if it's too loud, I will turn it down. So, once again, the plus sign on the remote control, turn it up, make it louder. Um turn it down, make it quieter. So, sometimes when I am watching something, um I have to turn it up and Jen sometimes says it's too loud. Um By the way, this is from I think the movie Spinal Tap. He has an amplifier for his guitar and he thinks it's louder because the knob instead of going to 10 goes to 11. It goes one more. Muffled. Sometimes sound can be muffled. Recently, we all wore masks a lot. Uh right now, we wear masks sometimes in Canada but um last year, I had to teach wearing a mask because of COVID and so, my voice was muffled. Um I don't have a mask here. Oh, I do have a mask here. So, what I noticed is when I wore a mask, I noticed that my voice sounded a little bit different. It was muffled. When your voice is muffled, it's um it's harder to understand what someone's saying. Here, I'll give you a better example. If I talk like this, my voice is kind of muffled. So, you can hear the sound doesn't come out clearly. I didn't like, I liked wearing a mask because it protected me but I didn't like wearing a mask because it was hard sometimes for my students to understand me and I had to talk louder and I would keep getting a sore throat. But yes, when your voice is muffled, it sounds like this. It's just, it's just hard to hear exactly what the person is saying. So, we talked about this earlier. When someone has trouble hearing, we say that they are experiencing hearing loss or that they have hearing loss. As people get older, they sometimes have hearing loss. They can't hear things as well as they used to. When you're young and your ears work really well, you can hear a lot of things but as you get older and sometimes for other reasons, you start to experience hearing loss. You start to have trouble hearing things properly and sometimes you need to wear a hearing aid. A hearing aid is a device that people wear in their ear to amplify the sound and that helps them hear even though they have some hearing loss. By the way, this is an older style hearing aid. I chose this picture so that you could see it really well but newer hearing aids are actually a lot more discreet. They're harder to see. My friend has a hearing aid and it's very small behind his ear and there's just a small little wire that goes in. So, you can hardly tell um that he is wearing a hearing aid. 
And then of course, we talked about when you completely lose the ability to hear, you are considered deaf. Deaf is the term we use to talk about someone who can't hear. Um so, I did some research on this because I wanted to use the correct terms. There are ways to refer to people who have trouble doing certain things that are not appropriate but my understanding is that describing someone as having hearing loss is the acceptable way and that you can describe someone as being deaf if they cannot hear. So, when you are deaf, you are unable to hear or you at least have significant hearing loss as well. And then, there's something called ultrasound. This is a cool one because there are sounds that are um so high pitched, we can't hear them but dogs can hear them but we can also use them to do things like we can see a baby inside of a mother's womb using ultrasound. When I was having heart problems, they would use ultrasound to look at my heart. They would send really high pitched sound waves in and I'm sure they reflect or bounce off or something magical happens and they can create an image from the sound waves. So, ultrasound is a very cool way to um to see. Isn't that interesting? We use sound to see. Hey, so that was a bit of a shorter lesson. I apologize. Remember, I'm trying to learn a new rhythm here um because I do have to leave for work in just a few minutes but I think that worked well. I'm just going to check if there are any more questions on the form. There are not. I will just answer a few questions from the chat for a sec and then we will wrap this up. Uh let's see here. John Wedge is here. Hi, John. Good to see you. Uh and then Brent again. Hi, how are you? Um uh oh, Brent is just listening to the audio. He's not watching. He's just listening. So, he's only hearing the sounds from my lesson. That's great. So, it cut. Ooh, did you see? Someone walked around back there. Jen's probably starting my van so I can go to work. Mode says, Brent is hibernating this winter. Possibly, yes. Okay, let me see here. There was actually a question here. Um Ario is asking Tamer to use the form. Excellent. Thanks, Ario for giving direction there. Uh let me check to see there are no questions in the form. Um let's see here. Thanks for helping out, Ario. Thanks, Yaroslav. There are so many sound effects in English movies with subtitles. So confusing sometimes. Yeah, because they'll put the word on the screen, right? Bell ringing or um yeah, I was gonna say something else but I I won't. Uh let's see. It's amazing how the technology can help deaf people who never heard can hear their first sound in their life. Yes, they are now perfecting operations that help restore some people's ability to hear or at least improve it. Uh let's see here. Brent says, have a great day at work. Yeah, you too. Uh have a good day at work from mode. Yep, no problem. Hey, let's wrap this up, folks. Let's uh let's uh take this lesson to its natural end. By the way, one of the gifts, I forgot to show you this. One of the gifts I got from Jen for Christmas was this picture here. So, not the tree. I showed you that before but this picture here. This is a nice beautiful picture of a sunflower. Do you wanna see a closer version? Let me grab it. So, this, hopefully it focuses in. This is a picture that my daughter actually took and then Jen had it turned into um what we call a canvas. Um and so, I just really like it. I feel like it's a nice cool uh, picture of a flower that Jen grew. So, I I'm hoping because I have a bit more time to get some pictures on the walls <laughs> in my little home office studio here. So, hopefully, I can do that soon. Anyways, thank you so much to all of you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Remember, this lesson will come out in a shorter version in a couple days. Please do a listen to it. You can watch it again if you want but listening to the sounds I made for the last hour um will be really helpful for you to improve your English. So, anyways, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna say once again, thank you to Eugene for the cool blanket uh and the other things uh and I'll say bye to Lolly Lolly, John Wedge, Key Park, uh Freddie Wolf, CS Team, Eugene, Naomi, Vitor, Mode Eggs. Mode, thanks for helping out in the chat again today. Lolly Lolly, Kirthy, Tamer, Noriko. Hi, Noriko. I didn't see you there. Yaroslav. Uh 
Ivan Ilson, Ralph. I'm just scrolling through. I don't want to say thanks CS team for becoming a member. Um, and I think I'm going to wrap this up. Jump in my van and go to work. Bye everybody. Have a great weekend. If you're like me and you still have to go to work or if you're like Brent who I think is already at work, have a good day at work or at school, whatever you do uh, throughout the day and I will uh, see all of you tomorrow. Oh, that's the other thing. It's the first Saturday of February. I almost forgot to mention that. There will be a live lesson tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I hope to see you all there. You can ask me any question you want. So, what do you need to remember? Live stream tomorrow. This video comes out in an edited form in two days and new video on Tuesday. I think it's a fun video. I like making it at least. Anyways, bye everybody. Have a great day. Um, see you tomorrow.